Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again to hopefully find the new best deck in Clash Royale using your guys' suggestions from the comment section. And I'm gonna put your guys' decks to the ultimate test at around 7,000 trophies on ladder. We're gonna assess the strengths and weaknesses of every deck, and we're gonna find out if they're trash or treasure. I'm hoping to find some unique card combinations that I've never seen before, and maybe we can find one of the new best decks in the game. So let's go jump right into the action and test out your guys' best decks. A huge thanks to everyone that's using Creative Kutzer Tag to support the channel, making high effort videos like this one possible. Vlavin just created a giant skeleton balloon deck that I've never seen before. Let's go jump right into a game and test it out for ourselves. Let's get it. So I think this deck is extremely interesting. Seen a giant skeleton balloon deck, so then the giant skeleton is going to be able to tank for whatever your opponent throws at to counter the balloon. Feels pretty good. I mean, they can't drop things on top of the giant skeleton bomb, so in double elixir, if you stockpile a miner, tanking for the giant skeleton, and then you get a balloon that's tanked for by the giant skeleton, it's a great time. However, I think we got the one matchup that I didn't want to play against. If we're playing against someone that has Electro Giant, how am I supposed to counter that? I don't have a building. Oh, this is tragic. Okay, he did use a lot of Elixir though, so maybe I can go in for a balloon and try to do some counter push. But hypothetically, right? Let's just, let's be real for a sec. If this dude goes in for an Electro Giant, and then he's able to go in for an Electro Giant plus Lightning on my Electro Wizard. How am I supposed to ever, ever stop him? That's the difficulty that I'm thinking about. Because my Electro Wizard is the main way of resetting and stopping the E-Giant. And when he's able to afford a Lightning or a Tornado to go and pull it in, it's going to be a problem. I'm hoping the Tornado's here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Could I take a tower? We might be winning this game. This is like the worst matchup imaginable. So if I win this, then anything is possible. But I don't have Elixir. I have no Elixir right now. Oh my gosh. I think I gotta go... Nah, I can't tornado that. I need to save my elixir. Golden Knight is so broken! My goodness! That did so much damage despite a Mega Minion being on it. At least we can reset the tower here with Electro Wizard, hopefully. The cannon's out of cycle, so now he's gonna Mega Minion on defense. Why does he have the Mega Minion version? Most of the time when you play against people with this deck, they're gonna have it with, like, Bomber, Cannon, Tornado, and then... No Mega Minion, they're just going to have Bomber and Rocket as their two defensive options. So, I, I guess that's not really good because Bomber is not going to be able to shoot up. And then Rocket is going to cost more Elixir than the Balloon. So maybe we could apply opposite lane aggression, but in this specific situation, since he's got Mega Minion and Tornado, it's going to be a lot harder. He's going to stop the Giant Skeleton from crossing the river so we can't get that value that we want where the Giant Skeleton would be tanking for the Balloon. And then he does have Lightning as we expected, but he wasn't able to hit the uh, Electro Wizard. It walked out of range. Wait! No way. That giant skeleton's on the tower! Oh my goodness. Guys, I'm telling you, we might have a chance at a matchup that shouldn't be possible. So I'm gonna fire spirit here. I'm gonna cycle another giant skeleton in the back. And we want to get him to lightning. We really need him to go in for a lightning here. On top of the mega minion and the giant skeleton. This is still really bad for me. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna drop my electro wizard. Hopefully he goes in for a tornado or something. We'll have to wait and see. He does. Good stuff. I'm gonna fire spirit here. and I'm gonna go in for a snowball. We kind of stopped that. I wasn't expecting this to work. Wow, this deck is actually quite good. I'm going to go in for a balloon here. And it seems like that I'll be able to kill the bomber. And at least be able to distract his Mega Minion with mine. If this can just get a little bit of chip damage, that's all I'm looking for. He lightnings. He has no elixir left over. And it's 7,000 trophies. We might have conquered the one bad matchup for this deck. Let's go. That Mega Minion is going to give us that last hit, maybe. If not, then I can snowball and blow him away. GG, well played, and peace out. Hey, this deck gave me 7,000 trophies, so... We'll show you guys our profile real quick, and as you guys can see, 7,001 trophies. That deck was so clutch. Now we're 9,600 in the world, and this deck conquered something that I didn't think was possible. Apparently, Giant Skeleton on defense with Tornado can actually clean up an Electro Giant in more situations than I would expect. I gotta give this deck an 8.5 out of 10 because I just didn't expect it to work this well. And the only bad matchup that I could think of going into the match was Electro Giant. Everything else, like Hog Rider Ducks, you've got Tornado, you've got Electro Wizard. If you're playing against Log Bait, you've got Fire Spirit Trick, you've got Electro Wizard, you've got Tornado, you've got Double Small Spells. You've even got a Miner to snipe Princesses and Dark Goblin. This deck pops off. Copper Short Sword said that there has not been a matchup that he wasn't able to outplay beating everything if he just had enough skill. That's a pretty appealing promise, so let's go jump right into a game and see if it's as strong as he says it is. It's time to put Short Swords deck to the test. I'm gonna go in for Spear Goblins at the start and they feel like they've got swords because they are menacing on that tower. That is hilarious that they just bypass the tombstone. Such an underrated card, so I like that Copper has this in his deck. 
Yo, so the Inferno Dragon for me feels really clunky, especially because there's a lot of Electro Giants in the meta. So I'm not a huge fan of the card, but yet again, let's see if it surprises me, just like the last deck. I don't think the Inferno Dragon is going to be able to kill much here, but as long as... Oh, that skeleton that's on me right now. I have to log it. That's going to be able to do like 500 damage if I didn't log. I can go in for Spear Goblins in the middle. Should be fine. I don't think I'm going to take much damage. The Spear Goblins do very, very well against Swarmy Skeletons, especially when I'm pulling all of the Skeletons in the middle, so both towers are able to focus everything down. As I said before, I think if I were up to me and I was like, hey, I don't really like the Inferno Dragon, I'd put in an Archer Queen. But if you don't have Archer Queen, you can run Musketeer or you could run Archers in the deck. That's just my initial suspicion, but maybe the deck works just perfectly as is. We'll have to wait and see. I'm going to go in for a great graveyard counter. Dropping the cannon card there means that it's not going to die to the fireball. It's going to stay alive. That's why it's one of my favorite cards in Clash Royale as well. So I love your deck combo. Love the fact that you got Spear Goblins. Love the fact that you got Cannon Cart and Mortar as well. These are all some of my favorite cards in the game. Having Rail Delivery with Cannon Cart makes every opponent rage on defense because they can't break through you. So Copper, it's a great deck. I also love the fact that you're using Goblin Drill with Mortar. That's a card combination that I've never thought of before. And it makes sense. I, I think it just does more damage than the Miner. So if you've got Spear Goblins and other bait cards, why not do it? Look at that. We bait out a giant skeleton that he didn't want to drop into an Inferno Dragon. And he's taking a negative trade here because he's taking damage from the Goblin Drill Goblins. And then I think the Inferno Dragon might even be able to go and kill his Skeleton King. If I log that back, okay, yeah, it might not be the best decision to go in for a Fireball here. But I think I'm going to go for Royal Delivery instead. Since the Royal Delivery is able to clean up most of the Skeletons as well, I think that's a good transaction. And then I can follow up with the Goblin Drill. I love this card. I, I just think it's so broken. Every time that you can outcycle your opponent's Skeleton King, the Goblins lock onto the tower, and then they're like, wait, I don't have a single answer in my deck. Those Goblins are just wreaking havoc on you. Oh my goodness. That is beautiful. Wow, you guys have come up clutch on Trash and Treasure. These decks that I've been playing the last couple, so good. Okay, I want to go in for a Mortar on defense so that doesn't get anywhere near me. And then I can Fireball, hopefully even hit the Inferno Dragon if I, if I get lucky. I don't think that hits my tower, so I'm going to log that back just to make sure that it doesn't explode on it. And, ooh, do I go Goblin Drill? Yeah, I think I do. That's good. You're going to go for Skeleton King. You're saving that in your card cycle, but you're still taking the spawn damage, and then the Goblin locks onto the tower. Oh my goodness. The beautiful sight to see, because I can outcycle your champion right now. I'm going to go for Cannon Cart. I'm going to go for Spear Goblins a little bit further back. We'll see if he decides to go for Arrows or if he Fireballs on the Spear Goblins. That would be pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm not going to have to do much here. I can just go for Ray of Delivery because the Spear Goblin should be able to kill everything. We are able to outcycle your Skeleton King if I at all able to count cards, which I think I should be able to at this point. Then I'm going to Fireball, Log, and walk away with a win. That was just way too easy. 7,000 trophies. We are crushing people with your guys' decks. This one, I think I have to go and rate up even a little bit higher. I would say this is a 9 out of 10. Seriously, I think the Inferno Dragon, if you're not playing against an Electro Giant, Super good card. And maybe if I played against Electro Giant, I wouldn't even struggle because I have Mortar, I have Cannon Cart, and I have Goblin Drill. If you guys didn't know, Cannon Cart is one of the best possible cards to counter the Electro Giant because if it's far enough away, then it's not able to get the reflection damage. But if it is close enough and they tornado it into the Electro Giant, then it's going to be a building that distracts them so then they can't get onto the tower. Mortar and Goblin Drill both can be used on defense to destroy Electro Giant because they don't target the Electro Giant. So the Electro Giant is never able to get that reflection damage to finish off those buildings. Maybe I wasn't being fair during the commentary thinking that. That you need to sub out the Inferno Dragon. Maybe it's good. So yeah, 9 out of 10, this is an amazing deck. Mostly because Cannon Cart, Mortar, and Royal Delivery are some of the best cards in the game. Along with Goblin Drill, which is one of the most profusely played win conditions from pro players. Adaya is on an 11-game win streak with this deck. Now you've got my attention. Let's see if it's actually good. So here we go. We are finally playing Rail Giant Hog Rider at 7,000 trophies. You guys have been asking me for the memeiest decks imaginable, and I'm trying this out to see if it's actually as good as our friend told us it is. I want to go for a Dark Goblin because it's going to be able to assassinate the Musketeer, and that looks pretty promising for me, but then we play against the Golden Knight, and then I'm like, if I wish, he just goes and clicks the ability and ruins me. Also, here's the thing. Look at my hand. All my Elixir and all of my deck just cost so much. So if I leap Barbarians there and that's six Elixir, I can't afford four Elixir on defense. I don't have Skeletons. I don't have Fire Spirit. I don't have Electric Spirit to dig me out of a hole. So this deck, it doesn't work super well in single Elixir. And on top of that, the one thing that is glaring right in my face 
is hypothetically, if my opponent really hates Electro Giant and they have a tank killer like a mini P.E.K.K.A. and they have a building, and I'm trying to bait out a building with a Hog Rider and they just mini P.E.K.K.A. and then save the building for the Royal Giant, I lose the game. Also, if my opponent uses Tornado, like they have a Graveyard deck or an Electro Giant deck, they use that on the Hog Rider, and then they go in for the building on top of the Royal Giant, I also lose the game because I don't have a fast enough cycle to outcycle both of their counters to me. So this deck works really well against control decks in Double Elixir, where you can bait out your opponent's building, and then you can actually afford a Royal Giant right after baiting out your opponent's building with the Hog Rider. In Double Elixir, you need to get there and then also, you know, be able to afford all of your stuff. It's not necessarily a foolproof plan. Also, I gotta be real with you. I think that Dark Goblin, Valkyrie, and Witch are not cards that you would ever see at the top of the leaderboard whenever you're playing a Royal Giant deck. So I think that the card combination is a little bit flawed as well. So I'll be showing you something that I like more if this deck doesn't surprise me, but let's just see what happens here. All right, the Elite Barbarians are gonna be able to kill the Mortar, so that's good. Somehow we baited out a building when he shouldn't have dropped that at all. Now we can Hog Rider other side. And he's going to go for another building. Okay, I can arrows on this. No, I'm not going to because the Musketeer is going to be able to kill anything, everything anyway. So I want to go in for a Valkyrie so the Mortar locks onto that. And then we can go for an Electro Wizard. But I got to go and pull the Golden Knight. Like, that's the only chance I have of being able to defend this. As you can see, I need to be able to apply opposite lane aggression here. And I've got like a Witch Valkyrie push. That's what I'm working with right now at the moment. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work because the Elite Barbarians are going to get distracted by Skeletons. And as you can see, I don't have enough Elixir to go in for arrows on top of the Skeletons. It's just, it's not something that I can feasibly do. I also have to Rail Giant because I can't rely on a Witch. It would just get Fireballed. But now I can't go in for Opposite Lane Aggression with my RG. So I'm going to try my hardest to be able to defend this. Maybe go in for a Dark Goblin here. Go in for a Valkyrie. And then he's going to follow up with a Log. Ooh. See, the Goblin Drill is a huge issue for me. Yeah, I'm just going to lose because I can't stop the Golden Knight. I just don't have Elixir. That Musketeer and Golden Knight damage is way too much. So GG and well played to our opponent. Uh, it was great gameplay on his end. And it shows that this deck's cycle is a little bit clunky. There's a lot to be improved here. Which doesn't have much range and it never helps you break through buildings. Which is really bad when you're running a Royal Giant deck. But what I would do is I wouldn't run Royal Giant and Hog Rider in the same deck. I would run Lightning or Fireball instead. So you can use that big spell to help you break through buildings more reliably. So then the Royal Giant can guarantee the tower damage. I would also take out the Dark Goblin because that's the only log bait card in the deck. If you have a slow card cycle and you can't cycle multiple Dark Goblins on the map and your opponent has log and they have a faster cycle than you, you're always going to give them a plus one trade, finishing off the Dark Goblin with the log. And you'll never get value from it. I have to rate this deck a 6 out of 10. Maybe it works at lower trophy counts, but the higher you get, the less likely it is to work. People are likely to have two answers to your Royal Giant and Hog Rider, so it's going to be really hard for you to bait out both of those answers, whether it's Tornado plus a building or a Mini Packa plus a building or any high damage unit card plus a building. So the concept of the deck just won't work right now. Instead, I would encourage you to play this Royal Giant deck that is played by a professional player, Sandbox, at over 7,800 trophies. It has the Leap Barbarians, Electro Wizard, and Royal Giant that you had in your previous deck, and it has a Lightning allowing you to break through buildings and get that Royal Giant on towers reliably. Alex won six 12 wins in a row with this bridge spam, and he even gave me the copy deck link. Let's see if we can assert dominance with the same deck. It's time to bring back the bridge spam. You guys already know about Bridge Spam with Elite Barbarians. It's ridiculously strong. And this guy was able to get a lot of 12 wins with the deck. It doesn't surprise me because I checked the leaderboards and this has played at over 7,400 trophies and it's played at the top of the world. And it doesn't really have a traditional win condition. As you said in the comment section with your lengthy comment, you talked about how you don't necessarily need Ram Rider, you don't really need Battle Ram, and you don't need Goblin Drill. As you said, you prefer a Goblin Drill, and I'm right there with you. I think Ram Rider is one of the worst cards in the game right now. But as we were talking about, you don't need to have any of those win conditions because your Elite Barbarians and your Cannon Cart are going to be pseudo win conditions for you. And what they can do is they can defend and they can take towers at the same time. So it's perfect for beginners. Whereas if you're running a deck like Hog Rider, you know that Hog Rider is not going to be able to defend for you. It is primarily just going to be an offensive card. And if your opponent spams into you and you have a bad card cycle, you're able to defend with Elite Barbarians or Cannon Cart. If they spam into you and you have Hog Rider and you don't know how to like defend with your other cards, you have a very limited selection to choose from. Meanwhile, we just took the tower while explaining everything because that's how easy this deck is. 
Generally, if you play against someone that is going to go in for Dark Princes and they go in for Bridge Spam, you can shut it down easily with your Cannon Cart because it's not going to die to a spell. If your opponent goes Elite Barbarians, you can hard counter it with your own. And playing against Sparky, it's so nice because you've got Cannon Cart to distract and then you've got Electro Wizard as well. So I'm loving this tech. I want to go in for a Heal Spirit here and then I can zap on the Sparky when he's about to drop it. Where is it? Oh, no. You didn't want to give it to me. Okay, you know what? I'm going to Fireball the E-Wiz away. Does it go to the other tower now? Yes! Let's go! I love being able to calculate that type of stuff and just get more value because it makes your opponent frustrated. I'm going to ban it when he goes Sparky in the back. And he's not going to have enough Elixir to stop this, right? Oh, I didn't time it perfectly. But for all intents and purposes, we definitely won this game. The dude didn't even touch my towers. This deck is incredible. I got to rate it like an 8.5 out of 10. If I were to change anything, I wouldn't change anything because it's already played by people much better than me in the world. And I think, it, as you said, it's a perfect deck for beginners. If you guys want to take your Clash Royale gameplay to the next level and you're, you're just starting out and you're like, I'm intimidated by professional players' decks, this might be a great deck for you guys to learn. Play a win condition that doesn't take that much thought process and just enjoy it. There was legitimately no way for this guy to break through whenever I wanted to drop a cannon cart or e-barbs on defense. Yeah, that goblin giant's just going to get shredded. His tower almost fell on the left-hand side too. This deck just feels so good. I got to give it an 8.5 out of 10. It doesn't have a direct source of damage with an actual win condition that can immediately go onto the tower, but the Leap Barbarians and Cannon Cart are good enough. When you get positive Elixir trades, when you're up Elixir, those cards are incredibly difficult to stop. And this deck will teach everyone how to punish opponents when you're up Elixir. You just have to pay attention to your card interactions when your opponent is down after a bad trade at like, let's say the Leap Barbarians kill a Hog Rider. That's four Elixir that they're down. You can start to spam in the other side and you can apply aggression with the Leap Barbarians counter pushing after they kill the Hog Rider and a Bandit in the other side. And then maybe because your opponent has less Elixir than you, they'll mess up and you'll take a tower. Elite Barbarians with Heal Spirit when you're down Elixir is one of the most difficult card combinations to defend in the entire game. Fly's asking, will this deck work? Well, that's what I'm here for. All right, so we got it the next deck of the day. Honestly, when I'm looking at it real quick, I like the concept, but I would immediately sub out that miner for a goblin drill. If you're running mirror and you're trying to mirror up miners, they don't do much damage. That goblin drill is going to pack a punch, and if you mirror it up in the same spot, it's just going to be treated as one goblin drill, so you can get a lot more damage. But personally, if I were to play this deck, I would immediately sub that out, and I don't think that that would be even a contention point for me. I think that the concept is pretty cool, though. I do like Mirror, and I think that Wall Breakers are extremely tough to deal with if your opponent's at a limited amount of Elixir. Also, Firecracker, when you go in for a Goblin Drill in front of the tower, it can splash onto whatever counters your opponent has. If they go for a Valkyrie or something, you can get a lot of value still. Miner, they're maybe not going to, you know, respond to as aggressively. So I think in this situation, it's important for me to go in for an Inferno Tower. I don't have a good answer to Graveyard, and that's what we're going to be playing against right now. So I think I'm going to Mini P.E.K.K.A. here, and I'm going to go for a Log. And then I want to follow up with Skeletons. Notice that I dropped my Log really far back, so then I was able to roll through and get more value. I hope that the Inferno Tower is able to kill this, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. So I'm going to go for a Miner on defense. Skeletons will fall. Does he still have the ability? I don't think so. I think he clicked it, unless I'm crazy. Yeah, no, he clicked it for sure. So we're chilling. We're chilling. What do we do? Do I go for wall breakers in the right hand side? And then, no, nah, I'm going to go for wall breakers left so we can pull back the barbarian barrel and then get a tombstone out of our opponent. So this matchup is pretty bad. I think this is likely the worst matchup for our deck. I, I don't think that the firecracker is going to help out much against the graveyards. And it seems like the mini packet doesn't do splash damage. So, you know, we'll see what we can do here. I'm going to go in for double mini packets at the river just because that's what I think needs to happen. I need to be able to just surprise him and catch him going in for a graveyard, defend with a firecracker, and maybe have the mini pack and just kill all this stuff. Like, hypothetically, if this mini pack locks onto the tower, or if we get him in a bad card cycle where we can go in for the wall breakers with the minor tanking, maybe that connects? No, he's going to have Tornado as well. So that was a great barber on his end. What can we do here? How can we find a way to win this? Hypothetically, if I go in for a mini pack and then go in for an inferno tower here, that might work out. It kills the baby dragon. And then I can Firecracker as well and just stack up a lot of them. Yeah, I think we're going to stack up a ton of Firecrackers and see how this works when we've got Mirror. As I said before, I wish I had Goblin Drill because I could just double Goblin Drill and guarantee that I get damage. Looks like my Miner on defense just is not cutting it, guys. So I'm going to Miner here and I'm going to follow up with a Mini Pack as well. Looks pretty promising to me, to be honest. It looks like I should be able to finish this off with a Log. If I Wallbreaker's other side, can we find our way through? 
We go for a firecracker. Wallbreaker's here. Poison is coming down from our opponent. I'm going to go for high skeletons. Maybe we can go and pull something else like the bar barrel. That'd be good. Nice stuff. I'm going to go in for mini P.E.K.K.A. See if he drops the Skeleton King or if he goes in for anything else. I think the Firecracker is just going to be able to kill the Skeleton King with our Mini P.E.K.K.A. So I'm not going to spend much more Elixir here. I'm going to go in for Minor plus Wall Breakers in the other side so we can force out extra Elixir. And then I'm going to go Mini P.E.K.K.A. as well because it seems like he might even... Yeah, he pulls it! That's what we we're hoping for. I don't know if that's going to hit the tower. I was hoping that we could hit a log on all the Skeletons. I tried to make a pre-log. It didn't really work out. If we get one hit, that would be a win in my book. Oh, yes! I'll take it. I'm going to go for a Miner, and then he doesn't have Tombstone because he had just dropped it. So, we'll see if we can go in for a Firecracker here and splash onto the tower and hit the Ice Wizard as well. So that's that's another good trade for us. If I'm just keeping up the aggression, maybe I can beat a Graveyard player if I just play better than him. But I, I definitely think this is a bad matchup. Also, I would presume that if, if you're playing against someone that has, like, a beatdown deck, it's better for you to not have Mini Peck in the deck because you already have good defenses with the Inferno Tower and you already have high damage. So I wouldn't want to run Mini P.E.K.K.A. in the deck. I'd rather have a Valkyrie to protect it and have more hit points. Here you guys see the huge issue here. He's going in for a graveyard and it's just completely surrounding my tower and I don't have many answers to that at all. My Firecracker, that's okay. Maybe I can go in for a Miner and then Miner here and see what else we can do with the second Miner. Oh, he just expected that. So yeah, I think I lose at this point. With 30 seconds remaining, I played this as well as I possibly could have. I tried my hardest. But this matchup just doesn't work out. So if I had to give you a rating on this deck, where would I rank it? Maybe a 6.5 out of 10 because it struggles against Graveyard Hardcore. I had to play really well and it still wasn't enough. And then on top of that, I think that you want Goblin Drill for more sources of damage. And then sub out the Mini P.E.K.K.A. for a Valkyrie so then you can protect your Firecrackers, which I assume is why you're running Mirror. In the deck, what else would you want to Mirror up? Your Miner, it doesn't do that much damage. Mini P.E.K.K.A., I could see that, but you already have the Inferno Tower that you want to keep alive. So the two substitutions that I would do, Goblin Drill instead of Miner, and then sub out the Mini P.E.K.K.A., put in a Valkyrie. If you do those two changes, I think this deck could rise quickly to a 7.5 out of 10, maybe even a little bit higher. But as is, this deck is not it against Graveyard. You have no way of removing Graveyard Skeletons when they start to swarm your tower. I was pleasantly surprised by the power of a lot of the decks today. I learned a lot of new crazy card combinations like that Giant Skeleton Balloon Electro Wizard deck that I just immediately wrote off and saying, hey, it's not going to work against Electro Giant. We play against Electro Giant and somehow win. But without a doubt, Copper Short Swords Mortar Goblin Drill deck takes the cake as today's treasure. You'll win battles at the river with ease with the rail delivery raining down from the sky, Cannon Cart crushing anything that dares cross, and then the Inferno Dragon just melting things that I wouldn't expect it to. In that matchup against the Graveyard player, every time that he went for a Skeleton King or things at the river, he wasn't having a tank for the Graveyard because the Inferno Dragon just got up in his face and melted all of his stuff. I also had no clue about pairing the Mortar plus Goblin Drill in the deck, but it worked out so well. In a lot of situations, my opponent had to pick between airing the Spear Goblins or the Goblin Drill Goblins. And that was a situation that gave me value every single time. Rating it at a 9 out of 10 is one of the highest rated decks that I've ever had on the series. Today's treasure was absolutely epic, but all the other decks were really creative and a lot of fun too. So make sure to let me know down below in the comment section if you guys have decks for future videos. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe for more daily content, and have an awesome rest of your day.